Simplified Chaos, episode 36. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Hey, wonderful friends. Welcome to Simplified Chaos. This is Jillian, and I'm with my co-host and husband, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? Yep, yep. Another great episode for you here today. Jilly, what are we diving into? Today's topic is all about why we've changed the way we shop and how to shop with more intention. Yes. I definitely like shopping with more intention. Saves money on the in the old bank account there. Yeah, so hopefully this episode will give you some great tips to kind of help pivot you if you are one that has been shopping mindlessly and you just need to go into a different direction, one that makes you a lot happier and healthier. Yeah, but before we dive into that, as always, we're going to show a little gratitude today. Jilly, what are you grateful for besides that coffee that you're sipping on there? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's pretty refreshing. Yes, it is. Um, Today, I'm grateful for these two books that I I purchased them uh, probably like six months ago. And I keep them in the house because they're those books that I need to constantly go back to just to kind of have a good reminder to prime my brain. And two of these books are about the way we live. One of the books is called Minimalism for Families by Zoe Kim. And the other book is called Essential and it is by The Minimalists. And I just kind of opened them up the other day just to kind of refer back to just to some help and feedback on why we're living the way we are and to kind of help remind me the reasons. And and I even need reminders of tips on how to shop better and just yeah. the why behind it. And I, I like having those as resources. And I'm not sure if anyone else out there has go-to books to help them, to help remind them of why they're doing what they're doing and just to kind of give them a little, you know, push in the right direction if they find themselves are going off course because even though we are living a specific way and one with more intention and purpose it's still we can get you know we can slightly go the way society's going and you're off yeah we yeah. can go i guess up with the stream that everyone else is going up and right. instead of doing what makes sense for us so it's yeah those two books are just a great reminder and refresher for me good stuff i like it jilly What about you, Nicholas? What are you grateful for today? So, I am grateful for holiday barbecues. Okay. So, we're recording this episode on Labor Day, so that Monday, and we went to a holiday barbecue yesterday with some some good friends of ours who are listeners of the show. Shout out, Beverly and Kevin. Bev and Kev. But no, it's, it's great. They do this every year, and it's just great to get people together that I might not have seen in you know, for a long time. And, and we've been hanging out with her crew for quite a long time. And it's just kind of cool to see the evolution when we were hanging out with no kids, no cares in the world. And now everybody has one, two, three kids and just kids running around on the swing sets, throwing balls around, playing cornhole. I mean, it was just a, a fun day yesterday. The food was great. And, you know, I'm just grateful for those kinds of parties because I know how much work and preparation goes into just planning them and getting the yard nice and everything like that. So, um, you know, big shout out for them for for throwing that and putting that together. It was just a really nice afternoon. So it was. Yeah. No. Holiday barbecues are the best. I, I love them and look forward to the next holiday barbecue. Minus which the is swings. Halloween barbecue. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Jilly, we're talking a little shopping today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's been kind of a pattern lately. I, I always like to start the episode with a good opener quote. Even yes. It's not the quote of the day. It's the... It's the opener quote. <laughs> it's the opener quote. I just kind of like doing this because it kind of sets the tone for what's going to be talked about. And I found this quote in that book by Zoe Kim. And here it goes. Our society pours out a never-ending stream of invitations to have more, do more, and be more. Mm -hmm. Not answering those invitations can feel like you're swimming against current. But I often wonder, what are we swimming upstream for? Right. And that just goes back to questioning, why do we do it? Like when it comes to shopping, why do we feel programmed to go shopping when you're bored, to fix problems, when you're sad, to celebrate, when you're happy? It's just, why? 
Well, and I think right now, more than ever, it's very easy to mindlessly shop. I mean, think about it. On, with the invention of online shopping, you, know, you have Amazon, you have um, Walmart, you have Sears, like all these websites that have come up, you know, only not only marketplaces, but everybody does their own online shopping. You can go to a, a certain store and, and get stuff and with free shipping and everything like that. So we always feel like we're getting a great deal on free shipping and on everything like that. But on the other side of it, too. With online shopping, there's advertising on every website that you go to, on every social media um, platform that you're on, and it just really, it's just in your face all the time, and, and mm -hmm. that's what can kind of contributes to this mindlessness, mindlessness when we're, we're shopping. No, I agree, and I don't think we realized that we had a problem until we had to stop and really, at least me, I know you probably didn't have a shopping problem, but I did, especially when I would have summers off. <laughs> and there's a lot of time just to be. And yeah. at first, all that time to myself was scary. I'm like, well, I have to fill it. Yeah. I have to go out and shop or look around. And most of the time when you do go to look around and quote unquote window shop, you're most likely buying something. Right. But So what were some of the things that you were doing you know, um, before we, we changed our mindset? I mean, I was just, anytime I was either bored, happy, content, or decided that I needed to celebrate something, I would always buy something right that was my method it was like buying would make me happier it gives you that that buying high that everyone likes you know when you buy something it's like this is exciting and then after two days it wears off right so i realized that i was at marshall's home goods target most of the time when i had a lot of time on my hands yeah, and i time, right? and it scared me yeah. it was like what do i do i didn't know how to just be comfortable with myself and the boredom and the stillness and now I'm realizing that I appreciate that more than ever. And I was realizing that all of these things I was buying wasn't making me happy long term. It was right. making me happy short term. Right. Yeah, for me, I've I've always been very selective. I think even like as a teenager um, or even younger than that, I was always just very careful with what I did with my money. And I really thought through purchases before I, I did them. Um then when I became like a young adult, you know, in my 20s, I was still selective, but, you know, I was, I was definitely influenced by advertising and what friends were buying, family members were buying, and it was really hard to, to not buy certain things. And I would say my one thing that I, I kind of, I don't buy it mindlessly, but I do plan it is, you know, I do like to get a new phone every two years, even though I probably don't need to. You're very intentional I'm with very that. Intentional you research with it, it and you yeah. wait long, like to make sure that's what you want. Like, I think you were always an intentional shopper. Like I had to take tips from you. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where you know, I don't like going out and shopping for clothes or shoes. I mean, I buy, I buy like three p pairs of shoes in one setting, like every two to three years. Yeah. <laughs> and I wear them out. Um, you know, I, I, I'm looking at it right now. The pair of Vans that I've been wearing, I bought in Hawaii on our honeymoon. Oh I'm my still gosh. wearing those. I totally forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a couple, you know, of pairs of shoes that I go through. Um, you know what? That makes me think of how awesome of a souvenir or like, memory is yeah. that that if you buy an article of clothing when you're on vacation somewhere and you just wear it all the time it's like you get use out of it and you get to see it and say hey like we went there and yeah. it was pretty rad yeah i brought these home from <laughs> that's Hawaii. such yeah. a cool idea but yeah i mean i think now that we're parents um you know we don't have that time to fill anymore and and you know we've been more selective on what we're buying and what we're purchasing and obviously we'll dive into that. Well, I disagree. I think we have time. We just don't have the need to fill it now. Well, that's what we're, that's what I mean. We're yeah. welcoming it with yeah. open arms now. So I think we just see time we have, differently. We have a little one that's keeping most of our attention at this point. Yes. <laughs> yes, she is. Yeah. Yeah, and I heard I read this somewhere that when your possessions were not adding up to happiness, that was the sign you needed to start subtracting. Yes. So we think we always need to add, 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 and that's what's going to make our lives fuller and happier and more fulfilling. But really, sometimes it can be overflowing and you have to subtract to really get down to the basics of what really is important. And sometimes when you have so much, you can't see what's important or you forget. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what shopping has been. Yeah. And, you know, the on the other side of the coin is, yeah, we've we're in a society now where we have to have instant gratification and, you know, 
like you said, if you're out there and just cruising around Target, let's say you're just going there to kill time, you're going to see something. You have to have that instant gratification or you see a watch that you want online and you're like, I need to have this instant gratification because it's going to be in your house the next day. Yes. You know, you don't even have to leave your house anymore. To You don't have to go to a mall or anything like that. You can see something online, purchase it, and you have it in your hand the next day. It's so instant dangerous gratification. And crazy. It's very crazy. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's almost like a drug. It's like, absolutely. you know, you get there. It's an addiction. Yeah. Um, but it's just crazy, you know, just how mindless we can be with, with spending and, and, you know, just buying things. And again, it's, it's like those things we will keep saying it throughout this episode, but it's like, you're great with it for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, a month, but then all of a sudden you don't use that thing anymore. Yeah. You don't wear that piece of clothing anymore. The longevity mm-hmm. of buying something on an impulse, like it, there's no longevity in your happiness. It's very short-term joy yes. because you're not really thinking about it. You're just doing it in that moment, in that time. And when you actually really think about things and how you're going to use it and the purpose of that's going to serve and can I use this for long periods of time? And most of the time, the answer is no when you mm-hmm. really think about it. But it takes you to re- – it's, it's hard because you have to resist that impulse to like pleasure yourself immediately. Right, right. Um, and – I know we're going to dive in and share kind of how we've changed our yeah. habits, but um, I wanted to say one more thing that I I've done done that I've gotten a lot better at before we kind of getting into how we've changed our habits. Is sure. One of the things is you know with with clothes shopping and I I really do like online shopping when it comes to clothes. I really don't like going to malls and and being in those environments. I just it's it's overwhelming to me. And I, get I know anxiety it is. Yeah, now. you get it's, anxiety going I, to the malls. Yeah, but. In the past, if I would buy something and it didn't quite fit the way that I wanted it to, I would probably just hang on to it because I didn't want to do the whole return thing and everything like that. And the thing would just sit in the closet or sit in a drawer and, and I would never wear it. And I really came to the realization, it was like, listen, if it doesn't fit the way that you want to, you know, send it back. Or, you know, the other thing is to actually, you know, bite the bullet, go to the mall and try it on before you buy it. Yeah, I think we talked about that, how we kind of set our own rule with online clothes shopping, how we really don't buy any clothing online unless we know the fit and the brand is going to fit us before we do it because we don't want to go through the chaos of just sending it back and having to deal with packaging. And, you know, it's just it's time that I don't want to spend doing. So I will bite the bullet if I really truly need something. I'm going to go to the store first. And if I really like the way it fits and I want another one, then I'll order the second one online yeah. if I can't find it in store. But I really don't like buying clothes online because I'm not really sure what the fit's going to be like. And I don't want to deal with sending yeah. it back. And I think it, it might be different for women than it is men because you know, we have standard clothing and, and, and standard fits. And most, I guess, clothing lines, you know, hold true to those kinds of fits. But like when, when you're looking to do like the slim fit or stuff like that, that's where it can kind of get a little... <laughs> Um, a little dicey when it comes to different fits, but a lot of the the online stores have made it easy to, to you know free returns and but it's just the time and effort that that you know. But think about why they do free returns. Yeah. It's because they want you to buy. They, well, exactly. They want to take that the friction out of exactly. buying. They yes. want to like we're going to make it I really mean, they've, easy. They've certainly yeah. catered to the consumer oh right gosh, now, and, they, and that's part of the reason why we shop mindlessly because they've made it so easy. And they do. you know, it, it used to be that you had this return policy and you had to have your store receipt and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And they made it almost difficult. And then all of a sudden, you know, Amazon comes along and it's just like, Hey, yeah, um, you want it. You got it. You, you broke it. We'll still give you your money back. And, it's really changed the way that business has been done. And yeah, it's it's nice to cater to the consumer and make you feel like I mean, you're the one spending money on it. But again, it just kind of feeds into this whole um, process of, of just, you know, hey, buy more, buy more, buy more, buy more. And it's just, you know, we don't need all this stuff. We really don't. And just because they make buying easier doesn't mean it's better for us. Like we think, oh, they're making it so much easier for the consumer. I have to have it. It's like, no, that that's why they're doing it because exactly. they want more business. But you don't have to buy it. Like, yeah. But they're we're, they're very, we're the they're ones very in smart. control. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that we have to realize is that Take we have the power. We do to make these decisions. You know, we we tend to blame the stores and and capitalism or, or whatever you want to to to, you know, dive into and I'm not trying to get into a political thing here or, or anything like that, but 
the end of the day with with our purchasing power you know we're the ones who have the control and we we're the ones who can make those changes um so yeah i mean if 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 buying less is is something that you really want to do you can be more intentional about it and i think you know we'll definitely share some good tips on you know how we've changed over the last few years for sure um jilly did you want to start with a a, yeah so if, just the tip. <laughs> if you've been a listener for a while, you kind of know that Nick and I kind of make up our own rules and it's kind of helps simplify our life. There are no life. rules. <laughs> There's one rule. There's one rule. <laughs> so I, we've kind of created rules for buying and it, it wasn't like super intentional, like this is going to be the rule and we're going to stick by it. It was just kind of natural and organic and it just kind of turned into a rule. Mm-hmm. But I only go to the store when I need to replace something. I no longer go to the store to pacify my time, to right. pacify me, to fill a void because I'm bored or any other emotion. I only go when I need something and that has transformed everything. It's funny when you just yeah. changing that one thing and it took a lot of practice to change that habit. So now instead of going to the store when I'm bored or when I'm happy or when I wanna celebrate, I find an activity to do that doesn't involve going to the store like right. going to the park going for a walk, starting a podcast, yeah. blogging, yeah. reading a book, playing with Lucille. And it's amazing once you replace that habit of going to the store with something else, how it just naturally starts to become your norm. Right. And you almost forget what that habit was like and how much money you spent and how much time you spent in stores just being wasted like it just didn't align with what i wanted and we're not gonna we're not saying that it's gonna be easy either it takes work and it takes practice to to do and and actually make those kind of changes so you know it's not something that happened overnight for us either no it's a gradual process and, and you know i think we've we talk about this on a lot of our podcasts is that we have to practice what it is that we're doing you know uh there was a saying that that my baseball coach used to have is like perfect practice makes perfect, you know, and you know, we always say practice makes perfect, but if you're not practicing perfectly, how could you be perfect in what you're going to do? So, and um, I heard this quote on Rachel Hollis's podcast when she was interviewing John Maxwell, who's just hearing him speak. He's just like, you want to quote everything, but he said nothing worthwhile. No, anything worthwhile is uphill. Always. Mm -hmm. It's always uphill. When you think about that, when it gets hard, it's like, that means you're going towards something better for yourself that's going to lead to something greater. And yeah, if it's really easy, then obviously you're not going to something grander and better. There is a movie where he's like, uh, it's, I think it's a baseball game, and uh, baseball movie. And he's like, the game just got too hard. He's like, the hard's what's make, what makes it great. Oh, it's uh, a league of their own when Dottie uh, <laughs> leaves or whatever. But he's like, the hard's what make it great. And it's I'm like, true. Tom Hanks, man, you're the man. It's so true. The struggle is what makes yeah. life like worth it. It's just so much happens in the hard stuff and that's what changing habits are changing mm-hmm. habits for shopping have been it's been really hard but we're we're seeing the benefits and yeah. it's phenomenal and kind of to piggyback on what you were saying you know shopping for replacing things or i say you know i i do shopping for things that are necessities for us so we have kind of like you do the grocery shopping yes um there's certain things that i'm responsible for so like i do the refill on Lucille's diapers or wipes or whatever, because it's on Amazon and it's fairly easy. I don't have to go anywhere. And I have that on just basically like a one touch thing. That is a need, yeah. That is a need, it's not something I need to think about. It's like (laughs) Lucille needs diapers, (laughs) we need to make sure she's clean. So, you know, those things, yeah, that's mindless. I want it to be mindless. I don't wanna have to think about it. I get Um, it. So those are things that, yeah, if it's a necessity, you know, do that, you know, make it easy as possible for yourself. You know, don't go out of your way. If you have something great like Amazon where, I ordered diapers, wipes, and then I ordered a couple of things for um, your sister, um, for her baby, so that they have it, you know, for that. I had it the next day, which, again, is great. It, it's mm-hmm. great for the consumer. Um, but those things were necessary. And, you know, it was great that I could still, I didn't have to interrupt my day. It was very easy. It was here the next day. Didn't have to worry about yeah. it. Yeah, and I think Amazon is wonderful. I think it's just how you use Amazon. Yeah. And my tip is, you know, if if there is something that I want to buy on Amazon and it's not a necessity for us, I put it in the shopping cart or on the wish list. I have a lot of stuff in the wish list that have been there for a long time. And I may buy them one day or they may just sit in the wish list because 
I've thought it over and I was like, I really don't need this at this time. I was going to say, if it's been sitting there that long, yeah. I, you want to just, well just go out it. of it. And, and most of the stuff in the wish list are books. Um, and I really yeah. prioritize the, the type of book. Like if it's something that I put in the, there and, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd like to read that. But it's not like one of those things where I need to read that. Then, you know, it'll sit there. But maybe one day. I'll be like, oh, maybe I do really want to read that. So those kind of sit in there, but I really don't have anything else in there. But, you know, I would I would challenge you guys to if there's something that you want to buy, your your, your finger is on that that purchase button. You're like, yeah, let's do this. Let it sit in the cart for 24 hours. Sleep on it. And the next day, if you still feel the same about it, yeah, maybe go ahead and do that. Or, you know, talk to people who might use it and see what their thoughts are. Do a little bit more research on it. But delay that purchase. Don't do that instant purchase right there because that's what's going to get you every time. Yeah, and I I find that I'm doing that too. Like when I do happen to go online and I see something like on an Instagram ad, I'm like, oh my God, that's a cute mom t-shirt. I totally want it. (laughs) I'll go to the website and I'll click my size and I'll do everything and I'll put it in the cart and then I exit out of it. Yep. Because if it's really on my mind in the next couple of days that like so much that I'm like, my soul is calling me to this Mm -hmm. shirt that I need to have, then I'll go back and buy it. But most of the time, I completely forget about it. And don't click that abandoned cart email that they're going to send you saying, hey, this is in your cart. Would you like to purchase it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, they they do everything. Yeah. So (laughs) if it's a site that you've already have your email and everything on there and you're signed into your account and you put something in your cart, don't open that email you get with them from them within the next three to 24 hours. And that's what they they set it up. Like if, if you've abandoned your cart, yeah. you will get an email in three hours. Like, hey, did you forget to purchase your blah, blah, blah? That's another thing I do. I immediately delete those emails. Yeah. As soon as I see them, I don't oh, click on them. I've unsubscribed from all that crap. And that's yeah. what I'm working on now. Yeah. I think that's another good tip is to start unsubscribing on on you know stores or anywhere yeah. you bought something where they're like we're going to send you an online receipt and then they get your email address and then you get it and they will give you coupons and this and it's like i don't want to see this anymore i don't need it more things in my face saying yeah. oh, you need to have this this is a sale so i've unsubscribed from a lot of businesses and, and gotten very, that clutter I'm, out of there i'm very ocd with my mailbox so you i are. just got tired of deleting all these emails like i wouldn't even open them i'd just delete them but i was like i don't even want to see this i don't even want to be tempted to open hey 30 percent off of know. all day or you know labor day sale i, I don't want to be tempted by that um so i just i've unsubscribed from all of them and much have, out of sight out of mind is, is is the best thing and i'm not tempted by that stuff anymore um i have another another tip or another rule that i find myself following before when i was shopping mindlessly unintentionally I was always going to sale racks. Yeah, I was. I I was scared to pay full price because I wasn't getting a good deal. That's what I convinced myself. But it's myself. your perceived value of that yes. item too. Yeah. And now that I've changed, I'm not scared to pay full price anymore. I actually would rather pay full price because then it means I really thought it out. Mm-hmm. I really took the time to think about that object that I was going to buy. Is this going to be something I can use long term? Is it made well? You know, and I. I find myself when I actually take the time and really question and pay full price, I feel so much better about my purchases. Yeah. I know that sounds really weird. It does sound a little backwards. When you pay but it full price, it's like when you buy something that's really expensive, you want to take care of it if you only have mm-hmm. one of them. It's just, you know, like if you buy an engagement ring, that's yeah. very expensive. Yeah. It's like a prized possession because I know you took the time to pick it out and you paid really good money for it and it's quality over quantity. You want to take care of it. So I think kind of applying that rule to items especially clothing i've noticed yeah i was always going to target sales racks and thinking i got good deals if i could get five of these things get you but now it's like i i don't even go to the sale racks yeah i i want to make sure that whatever i want it's like i'm replacing something i need so i'm going there on a mission and then if i see it and i like it and i'm thinking about all those questions i'm gonna ask myself then i buy it and the price doesn't phase me right now right and it's kind of to, to piggyback on that and i say piggyback a lot i realize <laughs> <laughs> but you know with my i talked earlier about you know my big purchase is usually a, a, a mobile phone every two years and i usually pay up front i don't do the over 24 months thing i i pay whatever it is for the phone right up front and then i don't get a case for that phone and you guys are probably like what he's dropping 700 dollars on a phone and no case it's funny. Uh, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast, and he had uh, DeGrace Tyson on there, the uh, the astronomer guy. And he's like, "Yeah, I don't have a case." He's like, "But he's like, I'm extra cautious with the phone 
because I don't have a case That's on it. That's kind of what I just did. Yeah, you just took the case off of it too. But I mean, I yeah. haven't had a case on my phone for, I want to say about five years now. And that Maybe always even scared six me. Years. I was like, and I have not yeah. broken a phone. I would, because I, I'm, yeah. I am knocking on wood right now. I think it's amazing. But I have, over over six years, I have not dropped the phone, put it in a toilet or anything like that. <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> unlike you. Um, I just, I take extremely good care of it because i know i paid a lot of money for it Mm -hmm. and i don't want it to be bulky or anything like that but i just value this thing um you know what it does and i know you guys are like it's a phone whatever that's just what that's my thing well it's weird you know i took my industrial case indestructible case off of it case was a it wasn't so i well it kind of was to take care of it better but it was so that i wouldn't pick up my phone as much right so it kind of deterred me from picking it up in places where I thought I might drop it. So yeah. it's like, you yeah, know, you I had different motives behind yeah, it. Yeah. And it's helped. I don't grab my phone as much. Like I'm afraid I'm going to drop it if I'm in a weird terrain somewhere and I'm like, Oh, I don't want to pick it up here. It might fall and break. And so now it just makes me more intentional about when I'm going to pick out my right. phone is, is this really a good moment for me to get out my phone? Or is this just because it's a reflex that I just always want to grab my phone? But yeah. So I think just applying that rule, it's not, a great rule. Not being afraid of full price because if you pay the full price, it really makes you think even more well thought out about yeah. your purchases. Yeah, good stuff. Any other rules you want to? No, pass I think along? I think those are. I mean, we have some more tips coming yeah. up in the resources, but I think uh, that kind of. I know they're not a lot, but they're pretty deep and yeah. they're they're packed. Yeah, there's so a just, lot of thought in them. <laughs> overall, I mean, just think it out. Um, you know, don't give yourself wait time, yeah, give yourself wait time. Don't, don't, you know, don't use those endorphins or whatever it is that go to your head when you're like, Oh, you got your hand over that uh, purchase button. <laughs> don't do it. Don't hit the button. If anything, just put it in your head. Don't hit the button. Don't. Well, you can't, you can put it in the card. Just you like can put sit it in there. The card, but yeah. just don't hit the, the buy. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. All right. You doing so in sync now? Well, nah, wasn't my intention. Should be anti in sync. No, bye, 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 bye. No, didn't like that. All right, I'm done. Resources. All right. (laughs) So I have two. Um, One of them is kind of an Instagram friend. It's at Someday Slower. Her name is Beth, and she calls herself a minimalist. And she has really um, some good Instagram feed to motivate you to just be more intentional with how you spend your time, your money. And she also had this really fun blog post that was called The Thing I Should Have Bought, (laughs) which kind of like, wait, you're a minimalist, but you're blogging about something you should have bought. And that's kind of the catch behind it. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I wanted to break down what the story and the lesson behind it is. Is that okay if I do it? Sure. All right. So she wanted a dress. It was the muted earthy tones that she loved. It was organic and ethically made, and I knew that I would wear it every day. But, wait, why is there a but? It was more money than I'd ever spent on a dress, and rightly so. It was made with love, and the people making it were properly paid. It completely fit my new ethos of buying once and buying well. That's a cool rule. Buying once and buying well. Write that down, folks. (laughs) Yet my mind and bank balance recoiled at the thought of paying for it. After all, I had been used to fast fashion and walking away with a handful of golden change. I was in town and when a passing and when passing a window, a shop window, I saw a cheaper version of the dress. It wasn't really the same, but similar. So I went in, I tried it on, along with a few other things in that range. And that day I came out of the shop with a bag of new clothes and one, two, three items. And to my shock, I still wanted the original dress that I didn't buy. (laughs) Only I definitely couldn't get it now because I'd spent half the money on mediocre items that I convinced myself were a better use of my money. I mean, why have one when you can have more? As soon as I put these one, two, three, four items on, I was waiting to take them off. And yes, you guessed it, I still wanted the original dress. Because buying stuff we don't really want doesn't satisfy the need. I'm sharing this to show you that we never arrive at minimalism. There are always lessons to learn and always mistakes to be made and what we do with those mistakes that matter. I, for one, have been reminded that second best, when you're able to buy what you actually want, will always leave you wanting more. And that maybe, just maybe, I did deserve to gift myself that one thing that I wanted most of all. It's like me with my phone. I I I like like how she shares the mistakes of how 
we don't always buy intentional and sometimes we are going to get off the path. But I think it's realizing that we did make a mistake and how to grow from it and learn from it. And we're not perfect. And sometimes we are going to have an impulse buy here and there, but then we realize it, we recognize it and we try to get back on that path because we know it's going to make us happier and healthier and it's going to align to what we truly value in life. So we strongly recommend you give her a follow. We'll put her uh, handle in the show notes and fill your Instagram up with things that deter you from buying rather than trying to get you to buy. All right, I have one more. One more resource. And this resource is a blog post from my blog, The Clean and Simple Life. (laughs) (laughs) Self-promo. And it's tips to buy less. And this is kind of, we covered some of them in this conversation, but- um, I'm not going to go into them into detail, but I'm just going to list out, Check the, out Julie's blog. the five tips that have really, truly helped me, and I hope they can help someone else out there. So number one, <laughs> avoid malls, stores, and online online shops when you're bored. Yes. Number two, find creative ways to use items you already have. That's huge. We thought we needed to buy things to solve problems, and then once we stopped, we realized... We have things in the house we can use yeah. to fix things. And yeah, more than likely, yeah. you already have what you need. You just need to find it or be a little creative. And that it sparks creativity. It's yes. like you have to force it, and it's it's cool to see. It's awesome. Number four, unsubscribe from online store emails and immediately recycle paper coupons Do or it. magazines. Don't even look at it. It's just trying to lure you in, and you don't need to be lured. Yep. Nope. Just put it away. Recycle you have, it. You have the power. You've got the power. There you go. <laughs> A little 90s action. Number five, before buying something, ask yourself these two questions. Will this item add value to my mental and physical health? Yes. And number the second question is, is this item worth my time? So think about if you do work, how much you make an hour and if that item is worth an, an hour of extra work to you. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Think of all you do yeah. in an hour at work or if it takes you three hours or five hours or a work week. Is it worth that? Just depending on what the purchase is. Yeah. Yeah. Good call, Jilly. So hopefully those tips will help you buy a little bit more purposefully and intentionally so that way you guys are living happier and healthier lives. All right. So take action. Your take action challenge today is replace your shopping habit with a new habit. A habit that directly aligns with your values. Yeah. So for example, Nick and I really value experience and family. And instead of shopping, we find ourselves going to parks or visiting a new coffee shop or hanging out with friends. We replace the shopping habit with something that we value instead. Absolutely. And it's been, it's been, I don't want to say life changing, but it is kind of life changing. It's 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 definitely a game changer. Um, you know, and again, I, I kind of joked with, about this at the beginning of the episode. Your bank account will appreciate you as well, mm. or your credit card. Your credit card companies won't like you, but you'll feel much better. You're going to find benefits in your time, energy, and financial standpoint. Yes. I know we have. We definitely have. It's <laughs> been great. You ready for the quote of the day? Quote of the day, Jilly. This quote is by Joshua Fields Milburn. He's and a minimalist. He's one of the minimalists, and it's from that book, Essential, that we will all put in the show notes. His quote is, consumption is not the problem. Consumerism is. Consumerism is compulsory, insipid, impulsive, unfocused, misguided, and worst of all, it is seductive. Yes, it is. Consumerism's shiny facade promises more than it can deliver because love is Happiness, contentment, and satisfaction are all internal feelings that cannot be commodified. And the truth is that once our basic needs are met, the acquisition of trinkets does little for our lifelong well-being. It was well said. Thank you. It took uh, only three tries for me to get it right. He uses a lot of great vocabulary, and I'm sometimes horrible at reading long words. That's so good. (laughs) You did great there on that third try. Yes. I didn't give up. (laughs) So, any th- any closing words, Jilly? Is that it? That's it. All right. <laughs> so, thank you all again for hanging out with us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, please definitely give us a five-star review or just share a screenshot on social media. And we will talk to you guys again next week. See you later, guys. We want to thank everybody for listening today. 
please be sure to subscribe and sign up to receive notifications so you know when the next episode is live. If you like today's episode and know someone who could benefit from the topic we covered, please share it with them. And if you have any suggestions for us and want to chime in on today's topic, you can email us at simplifiedchaospodcast at gmail.com, and that's chaos with a K, or send us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you next time.